As mentioned before, this is the Festival of the Epiphany. It falls on January 6th, falls right on a Sunday this year. And reminder that Jesus came not only for his own people, the Jews, but he also came for us non-Jews, us Gentiles as well. As prophesied also in the first lesson from Isaiah chapter 60, reading verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the hip. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels of Midian and Ephah. And all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Our second lesson this morning is recorded in the third chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, reading verses 2 through 12. The Apostle Paul, special apostle, called to be the apostle to the Gentiles. And you see what this means to him. Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you, that is, the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel today and also the basis for our sermon meditation is written in the second chapter of St. Matthew, reading the first 12 verses. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied. For this is what the prophet has written, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, 
Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace and joy are yours from God our Father and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the gospel lesson that was just read from Matthew chapter 2. Just reading a couple verses from the end of the text there. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This is the gospel of our Lord. In Christ Jesus, who is the light of the entire world, dear Christian friends, some of you may remember the old Tonight Show on TV, with Johnny Carson. Remember that? At the start of every show, the announcer would introduce him. Here's Johnny. Our text introduces us not to some mere famous comedian, talk show host. It introduces us to Jesus the Jesus who is the Savior not only of the Jews, but also of us non-Jews, Gentiles as well. Today we celebrate the festival of the Epiphany. Sometimes it's called the Gentile Christmas. And just as Advent had said he is coming, so Epiphany tells us here he is. Here's Jesus. And our text urges us two things. Keep on seeking and finding him as your Savior and keep on serving him as your King. The account of the wise men is perhaps quite well known, yet it remains somewhat of a mystery, doesn't it? Exactly who these men were, where they came from, how many of them were they? And what kind of star guided them, we, we don't know that. All we know for sure is what the Bible tells us. That after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, there came Magi, wise men from the east. They came to Jerusalem. They were seeking him who had been born king of the Jews. Now these men evidently were scholarly men. And they had seen a special star. That special star, they were convinced, would help supply a special need they felt in their lives. You see, the Holy Spirit was at work in their hearts, giving them the conviction that finally the promised Savior had been born. And now those magi wanted to know him personally, not just know about him, They wanted to know him, the Messiah, better. Now, to alert them as to what had taken place in the little town of Bethlehem, and then to guide them there, God had sent that special star. And that star led them to Jerusalem, the capital city of the Jews, thinking that, you know, they would find the object of their search there. How surprised they must have been how shocked to learn that the Jewish authorities had no clue about this king. 
They had to look it up in the pages of the prophet to find out where this king was to be born. But yet those wise men did not let that disinterest stop them, did it? They would allow no obstacle to sidetrack side them in their search. So when the star and the word finally led them to Bethlehem, how happy, how overjoyed they must have been. But you know that same decision and determination to seek and to find Jesus as our Savior and to know him personally, that must remain our number one priority in the new year. That's simply because we have the same needs as those wise men, don't we? Do we perhaps carry a huge load of guilt, maybe because of some skeleton in the closet? Do we have personal and family problems to solve? Do we need some uplifting because often we are down and discouraged? then we need to know this Jesus. God's Son come down to earth because he came to save us from our sins too. We need to keep the fire of God's love burning brightly in us as well because without that fire, without that love, we soon grow cold toward God and toward our fellow man. Epiphany says, here's Jesus, the Bible reminds us, grow. Keep on growing in his grace. Because a stronger faith means a firmer hold on heaven and also greater joy in Jesus while we're yet here on earth. In 1847, a Dr. James Simpson discovered the miracle of chloroform. You know, people could be spared some of the severe pain connected with surgery. You know, today, we would be terrified, wouldn't we, even to think of going under the knife while we're still conscious. But this breakthrough was one of the most significant medical advances in years. Now, sometime later, Dr. Simpson was lecturing in a college classroom And a student asked him, what was his most important discovery? Most of the students present assumed that he would refer to chloroform. They were stunned when he answered, my most valuable discovery was when I discovered that I was a sinner and that Jesus Christ is my Savior. He was truly a wise man, wasn't he? And it's still true that wise people still seek Jesus. But where do we find him? It's tempting sometimes to want either an angel or a star to guide us because that's how God announced the good news first to his own people and then to the strangers here in our text. But notice that both the angel and the star referred back to God's word and prophecy. They both deferred to the wonderful, living, powerful word of God, which by God's grace we still have in our possession. So God would say to us too, expect no miracles, look for no new revelations, You've got maybe not all you would like to have, but you've got all you need to have because you have God's word. Respect that word, as many do, but also use it. Read it. Study that word, as many don't. The Bible reminds us, search the scriptures. Keep on searching the scriptures because they do testify about Jesus, our only Savior. Many people 
including many Christians, are perhaps willing to go this far, they'll come, they'll hear about Jesus, but they're not quite so willing to follow through for their Savior. It's interesting what happened in our text. Even though the song, the Christmas song, talks about we three kings of Orient are, we don't know that they were kings, but again, certainly they were scholars. And yet they did not let all their wisdom turn them away from seeking and finding Christ. Nor did they allow the lowliness of his appearance, the poverty of his appearance, stop them from worshiping him. They bowed low before the baby Jesus. They offered themselves in complete surrender to him who was and is King of kings and Lord of lords. What their eyes perhaps did not see about him, their hearts by faith recognized in him, God's Son, now come to be their Savior. And so they worshipped him. And part of their worship was their gifts to him. Gold, incense, myrrh, nothing was too much, nothing too costly to prove their love for him. Now, we might be impressed with their gifts, but I think what should really grab our attention is their service. Service given to a tiny little child whom they knew to be their savior. As their savior, they knew he had a claim on them, on their lives. Not only was he the savior of their souls, he also wanted to be Lord, master, of their everyday lives. They knew they had this one Savior, and they knew that also for the rest of the one life he had given them, they wanted to spend that in serving him. Now what are we talking about here except good, sound, solid Christian stewardship? I think these magi are shining examples of what to do, not only with the treasury and trust to our care, but also all the time, all the talents, the gifts he has given us. You see, it wasn't the easiest or the most convenient thing to travel all that way to Bethlehem. They lived hundreds of miles away. They were probably busy too. But they took the time necessary, they made the sacrifices required because their Savior was that important to them. Is he no less so to us today? Is he no less so to us today? And you know when these magi went home? Can you imagine them not telling a soul? Surely the Savior they had seen, they couldn't help but share with others. Important lessons for us too. But did you maybe notice the secret to their tremendous service? they first gave themselves to Jesus in humble submission to him. They bowed low before him. They surrendered themselves to their Lord in humble joy and thankful love. And you know, the rest just kind of followed after that, didn't it? Kind of like the early Christians who gave that tremendous, generous offering for the relief of needy people in Jerusalem. How'd they do that? First, they gave themselves to the Lord. Then followed those generous, willingly, cheerfully given gifts to the Lord. You know, the poet puts it this way. The best of offerings he requires... Your heart it is 
that he desires. I know Christmas is over. Decorations are coming down after the second service. But please, please don't ever put Jesus away. Keep on seeking and finding him in word and sacrament and keep on serving him in daily living. I think there are plenty of opportunities for both, aren't there? How many worship services this year to worship him publicly, to receive his sacrament? Then there's Bible class, isn't there? Sunday school. Daily devotions at home privately pondering on his word, all for the strengthening of our faith in him. And then think of all the opportunities to serve him, not only through the offering plate, but think of all the Christian good works. Whatever we do, all to the glory of God, serving others, serving him at home, church, work, play, government, and so on. All these things, and who's going to do them? Except we whose eyes have seen our King. All in thankfulness that we Gentiles have a Savior too. But remember, many more need to know Jesus. Remember that they have an epiphany star And that star is you and I. Those people are to find their Savior through us. God reminds us to be stars who let our light shine. We serve him by working and witnessing so that others see not us, but see our Heavenly Father through us. Will we do all these things? Learning from Scripture? Or will we find ourselves sometimes dull, disinterested, maybe even disenchanted? The remedy for all that is to seek your Savior all the more through his word. Go back to the source of the light that you are reflecting. Let his amazing saving love, fire up your heart and light light up your life, then more and more we can't help but be all that he wants and equips us to be, willing workers, capable witnesses for him. Now, the Jews in general had their chances. For the most part, they threw them away. Here, God gives us wise men who made the most of their opportunities to find their Savior. And when they found him, their overwhelming joy found an outlet in their unending service to him. Here's Jesus, our text says. Through word and sacrament, keep on seeking and finding him as your Savior, and in life, keep on serving him as your King until life in Jesus turns finally into life with Jesus in heaven forever. God grant that for Jesus' sake. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God that passes all understanding shall guard and keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.